This is the Unify USW Aggregation 8 port 10 gigabit network switch, an affordable managed layer 2 network switch from Ubiquiti that we feel no one is talking about and we're gonna change that. In our never ending quest to upgrade the Two Guys Tech homeland, we are always on the lookout for affordable high performance switching. And that's when we came across the Ubiquiti Unify Aggregation Switch with this eight 10 gig SFP Plus ports. And get this, John, not a single fan. You wanna check it out? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's dig into the details, shall we? The USW aggregation measures in at 442.4 millimeters or 17.42 inches wide by 120 millimeters or 4.72 inches deep and 43.7 millimeters or 1.72 inches high. Up front, you'll find eight 10 gigabit SFP plus ports with 80 gigabits of total non-blocking throughput, 160 gigabits of switching capacity and a forwarding rate of 119.04 million packets a second. On the front left side of the switch is Ubiquiti's trademark 1.3 inch touchscreen, giving you an at a glance insight into switch port statistics, switch status, and more. Around back, we have a single power plug with a switching power supply that supports 100 to 240 volts AC. The entire switch's maximum power consumption is just 30 watts and it has no fans, which is my favorite part. And while the switch's enclosure looks aluminum, a la Meraki style, the case is actually SGCC steel. The Ubiquiti Unify USW Aggregation 8 port 10 gigabit switch goes for $269 direct from Ubiquiti's website. Because this is a managed switch and management is done via the Unify console, you'll need to have an instance of the Unify controller running somewhere on your network. The Unify controller is free and can be either run on a dedicated virtual machine, Docker container, a Raspberry Pi, or you can buy a cloud key from Ubiquiti, which is essentially Unify running on a single board computer. We wanted to run you through just how quickly we were able to set up this switch with our instance of Unify running in our lab. First, let's get this bad boy racked up. Now let's get logged into Unify, adopt the switch, and get it configured. This is our Unify dashboard we see once we log in. We currently have four Ubiquiti switches running on our network and two access points for Wi-Fi. Let's head over to devices on the left and begin the adoption process. At the bottom of the list, we see our new switch which has been detected and is awaiting adoption into our controller. When we installed the switch and uplinked it to another switch, the USW aggregation switch was able to grab a DHCP address and become available on the network. Let's select our new switch and begin the adoption process. On the slide out details window on the right, we have an adopt button that will click and the Unify controller will push out our standard site config down to the switch. The status of the new switch will show as provisioning until the adoption process has completed. Once the switch has been provisioned, we can see the eight ports, make changes like applying port profiles, provide port names or aliases, and monitor the network traffic through the switch. Done and done. Up until now, the most affordable 8 port 10 gig switch out there was this guy. This is the Microtik CRS309 1G8S Plus N. It also retails for $269, but can rarely be seen for $240. The CRS309 is also fanless, has a maximum power consumption of 23 watts, has an extra 1 gig Ethernet port, and can act as either a layer 2 switch or a layer 3 switch, depending on what code base you run on the unit. So let's compare these units against each other stat for stat. On the left side, we have the Ubiquiti USW aggregation switch, and on the right, the Microtik CRS309 1G-8S plus IN. We'll be using the published numbers from both companies. Both switches claim 80 gigabits per second non-blocking layer 2 throughput. Ubiquiti claims 119.04 million packets per second to Microtik's 120.5 million packets per second. Ubiquiti claims 160 gigabits of switching capacity to Microtik's 159.9 gigabits capacity. Ubiquiti's maximum power consumption is 30 watts to Microtik's 23 watts. Ubiquiti is powered by the main power plug. The Microtik can be powered by either a DC power plug or using PoE via the Ethernet port. Ubiquiti has no serial management interface and the Microtik has a 9-pin D-sub management interface. 
The USW aggregation switch only supports in-band management, while the CSR309 can be configured for out-of-band management. The retail price of the Ubiquiti is $269, and the retail price of the Microtech is also $269, so it's a wash there. From a purely numbers level, both switches are essentially equal in performance, but there's more to this picture than just hardware stats. Let's talk about management interfaces and user experience. Because when the hardware is the same, it's the UI that will win the day. Microtech's management software is known as Winbox, which has a learning curve and is, in our opinion, not user-friendly at all. Yeah, we'll probably get some flack for saying this, but it's true. It looks straight out of Windows 95 and has the application to back it up. Don't get us wrong. We know that the software is powerful and that it essentially gives you an ISP's level of capability just by switching between Switch OS and Router OS, but it's just not user-friendly. Compare that to the Unify and it feels like a completely different world. It's just far more user-friendly, easy to navigate, and gives you not only an individual view of your network gear and devices, but also a more complete view of your network as a whole. When you log into the Unify console, you're greeted by a customizable dashboard of your network where you can get an at-a-glance view of your network, connected clients, and any issues that might exist. Coupled with Ubiquiti's Wi-Fi access points and their secured gateway, and you have an entire Meraki-like dashboard at your fingertips without the licensing fees. Device management is GUI-driven and more intuitive, but Ubiquiti took some liberties with some of the organization of the Unify console, and some logical layouts might not make sense until you become familiar with their approach to network configuration and deployment. It might sound like we're hitting a microtick, but we're not. Though this management UI is garbage, their gear is not. And Microtik is still the cheapest game in town for 10 gigabit at the four port level, where no one can compete. So if you're looking to build a small, affordable 10 gig network, they're basically the only option. What's left to say about Ubiquiti's USW aggregation 8 port 10 gig switch? It's a high performance, competitive priced 10 gig switch that fits right into anyone's home lab. If you're a Unify user, we know you've already made up your mind to buy one. For those of you on the fence on which direction to go in affordable 10 gig switching, we recommend this switch. Just remember that you'll need to spin up a Unify controller to manage it. Ubiquiti has higher port count 10 gig switch options out there as well, but the prices scale quickly, putting them out of the comfortable range of many home labbers. Thanks for watching this video. We would love to know what you think. So get down in those comments and tell us, is this your next network switch? We'd love to know. If this is the first time you've seen us, subscribe, like right now. If you like what we do here and want to be on social, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And lastly, get on our Discord. It is a great growing community of people who love tech and we would be happy to have you. Thanks for watching and we will see you again soon.